Kent E. Nielsen here, and I am delighted to have you with me. Christ came into the world to do the will of his Father, and he prepared a way for you to do likewise. Join me to put him first in your life, receive the fruits of godliness, and realize your divine mission to be like him. You were born and commanded to do greater works than he did. Now let's go to work. Do you give generously? Do you give to those that are less fortunate than you? I'm not just talking about finances. I'm not just talking about time. I'm talking about giving of your substance. Substance isn't just a money thing or a time thing. Substance could be your faith. could be your wisdom. could be your knowledge. could be a plethora of things. And today I want to talk about a special word um, that helps to a different vantage point on the word charity, which is to give. And, um, and that word is called genshai. And before I dive into that word and its definition, we'll start with a little story. So there was a beggar woman who had two little children and there uh, she was being approached by a caravan of very wealthy man named Mr. Golden Gatherer. Golden Gatherer, I believe. And the story comes from a book called The Great Stone Face by Nathaniel Hawthorne that was originally published in 1850. Um, anyhow, there's, there's this really wealthy man. He comes into town and he's built up a massive mansion. He's got his entourage and he comes into town and this beggar woman, is he passes by and he gives of his substance to her, which is good. That's great. That's commendable. He He gives her some copper coins. But the word gensha in its definition, it teaches us a deeper meaning of giving of our substance to other people. Unlike the example portrayed by Mr. Goldgatherer, I believe that was his name, the, the word gensha is totally opposite of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen with you and we'll dive into the definition of gensha and we'll talk a little bit about this story of what, what per, took place with Mr. Gather. How did he give of his coins? So as you can see on the screen, I was doing some reading last night and um, with my family. And um, we read from the Great Stone Face. I so started reading that with my family. Each night of the week, we're assigned a, a different member of the family is assigned to do reading aloud. And that's what I chose to read last night. And that, that book was referenced from Napoleon Hill's book called The Law of Success. And uh, his original edition of it from the 1825 edition, rather than the more popular 1829 edition. Anyhow, I dove into that book and I'm really, really loving the par parallels with it and the significance of putting your life in order so that you can represent the countenance or the image of Christ, that you may have his image in your physique, for example. So um, anyhow, back to Genshaw. So this, this man in his entourage and his great wealth, he scattered copper to the ground before this beggar woman and the two children, which is great. I'm, I'm glad he did that. But we're gonna look at a deeper meaning of the word charity through a word called gensha. And this, this word was brought to my attention from a book called Aspire by Kevin Hall, who was published in 2009. And he traveled to Vienna, Austria, and he met a, a man named, per, well, let's see what his name was, Pravin Shirkuri, um, it's right here. And he, this man um, taught him the power of the word gensha. And it's it means, the word gensha means that you should never treat another person in a manner that would make them feel small. If you were a beggar woman, I'm sure you would be grateful to have some copper coins tossed to you so you could help provide for your children. But I think that that was kind of, uh, there was a better way to give those coins than to just toss them to the ground. Um, and this next definition 
further exemplifies from Pravin's actual life. So it says, continuing, Pravin explained, as children, we were taught to never look, touch, or address another person in a way that would make them feel small. If I were to walk a, to walk a beggar um, in the street and casually toss him a coin, if I were to walk a beggar, I read that right, in the street and casually toss him a coin, I would not be practicing Gensha. But if I knelt down on my knees and looked him in the eye, when I placed that coin in his hand, that coin became love. Then, and only then, after I had exhibited pure, unconditional brotherly love, would I become a true practitioner of Genshai? So um, as this is a, this takes giving to the next level. When you give of your substance, whether it be, be financial, time, uh, or, or substance of, of your knowledge, of your wisdom, writing a book, painting some art, do you give it in such a manner that you are at the same level, you are an equal with the receiver? And if not, there's always room to, to change and to improve. Um, so in conclusion, um, I, I'm going to dive into this scripture reference here, Jacob 2.17. that says, think of your brethren like unto yourself and be familiar with all and free with your substance that they may be rich like unto you. Let us give, give, and give so that Others may be blessed. And the beautiful thing is, this isn't why you do it, but the beautiful, the, the, the effect of that cause of giving is you get more. The more you give, the more you get. The more you praise, the more you receive. There's beauty in giving and loving and serving. So um, and I conclude with these, these questions here. What is substance? Is this only money or talents? I trow not, as the Savior said in the New Testament. It is wisdom, words of life, affection, sympathy, sympathy, compassion, I might add. Are you free with your substance? Do you practice Genshai? Thank you for joining me for a brief mental workout. Wise men do their mightiest works with their mental exertions. I encourage you to take time to ponder on the weightier matters of life and to govern your body with pure mental exertions rather than having your body tell you what to do. You are welcome to connect with me further at my link in bio where you can access my book, my social handles, my latest creative updates, and even request coaching services via email. I have been given much and am here to serve. Thank you and God bless you to be fruitful in doing your mightiest works. Good day.